When you say yeah. uh, you, you train people who are going overseas, even if they're on the way to the airport and in three or four hours, could you give us just a, a, a two or three minute summary of what do you mm -hmm. share with them yeah. in three or four hours to train them? Is it what you just share? Yeah. That's right. From low chapter 10 or? That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, th that's uh, a second. The first one is to give them an overview does God expect them to do over there? Mm -hmm. And to show them that they can be a little Jesus, okay, and do the mission strategy of Jesus there. And it's so simple. And uh, if you use Luke 10, uh, it inspires them because it says that you don't need to bring uh, much money uh, into uh, the, the mission field. In fact, uh, I so that they will not forget, I use the term zero budget missions. <laughs> you, uh, we just empower you, uh, train you, and then empower you, give you authority. You are God's agent of His kingdom uh, wherever you go. And uh, since you have been a church member, you know already uh, the basics of the faith, uh, but you don't need to share too much of that. What you need is just to share the Bible, and, and, and that, again, uh, simplifies the thing. And what kind of Bible? The English teachers I sent to China, they just bring their English Bible, not even a Chinese Bible. Why? There are Chinese Bibles in China. You can just go to any pre-self church or to, to go to some, uh, some bookstores, and they can get copies of the Bible. Now, what, and so the Chinese can buy their Chinese Bible in China. But you have English too, uh, uh, Chinese who are studying English with you. You teach them in English, you don't need to learn Mandarin, uh, but they are eager to learn English from you. You use the Bible uh, to, not in the class, but privately when you choose the top three or four English students in your class to decide. And even you don't need to look for some because the school will assign one person to be your teacher's assistant. Who will be your guide to go to the canteen, to go to, uh, to do your groceries, and to do your shopping? Now, that student is your first person of peace, your first victim of evangelism. <laughs> that, that's a, and then he or she, these people will now disciple their fellow barcada, their, their, their fellow classmates in the, in the school. These are fellow Communist Party members. And so the beautiful thing is that 95% uh, yeah, of university students in China are belong to one party, the Communist Party of China. Yeah, yeah. You cannot go to university without being a member of the Communist Youth League. Now, and this is the most radical thing. And in fact, I brought a uh, a, uh, a book on insiders. Uh, uh, yeah, Oikos, uh, how the kingdom of God comes in the form of Oikos. And, and the important thing about the Oikos is that they must stay in the community. Their convert must remain communist in China. Why? Because you want to use him to evangelize the rest of the communists in China. So the traditional method that we have is we call extraction evangelism. Once a person becomes a Christian, whether he's a Muslim or yeah, you pull him out. You 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 make a, if he belongs to a Catholic family, you bring him out of his family. And so for the next twenty years, he is persecuted by his family. But we uh, in in our paradigm, we already tell them it's so simple. Go back to your family now and apologize how radical you were to break away from the family tradition. Now you go back with some gifts for your family and tell them, I'm so sorry that I, I broke our family taboo, uh, that I became a pro Protestant <laughs> or I became a, a born again. 
but now you see uh, it's all right uh, I'm still a good son and I will become a better son or a better daughter in this family I will now join our family celebrations and, and etc so it's the same with a Buddhist or a Muslim convert they remain in their Muslim culture in the, including uh, going to the mosque including uh, praying five times a day etc why you want your first few converts to be able to convert the community and pulling them out is the worst strategy <laughs> in terms of having first fruits to harvest the rest of the abundant harvest uh, in the community and so uh, the assignment is very simple just do what Jesus uh, did and what he did was Mark chapter 3 verses 13 to 15 that he chose 12 out of his many friends he chose 12 and even if he knew one was not or two were, were not very good in their character uh, Judas was a bit uh, a lover of money uh, he, he or had ambitions political ambitions uh, he, he, he recruited them oh that's very uh, so don't worry about whether the people you disciple are really pure in their heart or not just let them study the scriptures because what Jesus did was he chose 12 to be with him that's disciple not just on Sundays but as often as possible to be in Filipino Ebarkada Filipino language to be your barkada for uh, so I call it barkadahan in Jesus name and so and as you are there you have only one thing to do and that is to help each other grow in love for God and love for neighbors just obey the great commandment and if you want a heavier one then the new commandment and the new commandment is to love one another and then people will know you are the disciples of Jesus by that identity the mark of a Christian is somebody who loves not just one another in your small group but also they know how to love one another in the community if you learn the basics of how to love one another in your small group how to have intimate transparent relationship with one another so you are best friends to one another and so you can go to the barangay chairman and uh, and then later on to the city mayor and just be a good friend it is actually a, a learning how to bless others by becoming their friend and then discipling them to follow uh, Jesus uh, as good friends together in the family of God uh, and, and so uh, well, in the Philippine context, uh, we have to train the pastors now in community development, how to work with other born-again people, and how to work with the Catholic priest, and, and hopefully uh, beyond just learning how to connect with the political leaders, uh, how to befriend the Muslim imam, uh, if there is a Muslim community in your uh, village or, or your town. But anyway, uh, so that, that's it. So in the term of, terms of a person who goes overseas, we say there are many things you should not do. So actually, the, uh, the, uh, after it's changing their paradigm of what they are expected to do, it's not to start a local church. Mm -hmm. It is just to find 12. And it's not even directly your 12, just three. Because these three may have their three best friends. So they become your, your uh, a bigger barkadahan uh, later on, but just find the local. Thing. Don't even try to master the Mandarin. <laughs> you just learn the basics of Mandarin just to be able to go around the, the streets. Uh, but you show that you love China. How do you show you love China? Tell your uh, your your new friend, uh, whoever is your guide, to bring you to the museum to bring you to the park, to let you see and appreciate China with only one rule. What rule? Never criticize. 
the local culture. You know, show how much you love, and never criticize uh, anything about China, especially politics or religion, <laughs> or sports. So uh, the, these are emotional issues that people uh, can react and and turn you off uh, just because you said the wrong thing. Now, but becoming best friends is 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 to adjust to their culture as much as possible, and that Filipinos have no problems, um, quite easily for, for them. So that's a, a kind of orientation I would even call uh, that just to adjust your expectations and then adjust what skills you should do. And, that, and in the case of Jesus, how to have a personal devotion three hours a week with Jesus, three hours a week with your disciple, who we are discipling, and three hours a week making new friends so that you can have new disciples. So I, I say, if you have the navigator wheel, uh, are you familiar with that? With a Christ-centered life, mm -hmm. you have prayer and the Word of God, okay, and Scripture. So that is personal devotion. Three hours a week, silent before God. If you go, go as a married couple, or, or even here in the Philippines, ask your spouse, your husband or wife, and say, please give me three hours a week to be alone with God. Okay. Uh, just to open the book of God and, and, and immerse in the Word of God. The second is now how to do this with a group, with your barcada, with your uh, Christian friends. Uh, so personal devotions, body life with fellow believers, and lastly, friendship evangelism and witnessing lifestyle to relate to the non-believers. So if you look at the wheel, prayer and uh, Bible, then you have to the left, fellowship, and to the right, witnessing. That is what constitutes a dynamic Christian life. And if you have that, all the rest, are extra luggage <laughs> or oftentimes they also become distractions so that you can become very busy with church work that you have no time for the work of the church which is to make disciples so disciple making is just to focus on these three basics personal devotion with God fellowship with fellow believers, your few disciples, and thirdly, friendship evangelism, witnessing to non-believers. If you do these three, you're a disciple who can make disciples. I have several questions. Uh, yes, yes, several. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Lim. It's been a long time to see you again. Oh, yeah. And even though you said that this is a radical, I would say that rather than radical, that's essential. Radical means roots. Yes. Basics. <laughs> you go to the root. But the term radical is misunderstood among us. Radical means sometimes give us some opposite or very offended meaning. But I would say that your term, uh, radical, is very essential and very wonderful. However, can I ask you some two or three questions that um, the first one is, um, you have been um, teaching and encouraging others regarding house church movement and church planting movement and uh, now transformation theology. Um, is there any one ethos penetrating these three terms? Because I heard many lectures for the house church movement, a disciple yeah, mobilizing, disciple making movement. Now you are saying uh, transformation theology. What, are, what is your ultimate goal of transformation theology? Ultimate goal. What do you expect? Yeah. Just in one word. Well, doing Acts 1.8. Okay. Effectively. All right. Okay, the one more thing that very clear. Thank you that. Um, then the, I just want to ask this question that Okay, you trained Filipino pastors in Filipino context. You said that you needed to access, have some good relationship with other locals. 
However, when our Filipino Christians supposedly went abroad, and they are starting to make disciples there, and uh, what should be the relationship between the new group and the local churches already exist in the local? What shall be? Because you didn't mention about it. Yeah. What shall be? Because sometimes, because of that movement, as I told you, they will understand. Local people, local church leaders will understand it. This is very radical. Even though it's very important, it's very good. They will think oppositely. Say, so what shall be? That's why we need to disciple new types of pastors who are not threatened by what I'm going to say now. Okay? Yes, yes, <laughs> because yes. our ideal, uh -huh. uh, especially in, well, in China or let's say Saudi Arabia, All right. The ideal yeah. tent maker from the Philippines should not plant a Filipino church. Very good of uh, yeah, I yeah. love it, I love it. But but in reality it's different, right? Correct. <laughs> the the ideal is that he befriends let's say an Egyptian yes. or a Nepali or an Indian in the workplace. Okay? Or if he goes as a domestic helper in Hong Kong in a Cantonese. He sh they, they discipling your masters. It's okay, but you don't start a Filipino church with that person. That person should be going to a Chinese church or, more oh. important, start their own disciple making. The businessman evangelizing his fellow businessmen for Jesus. Yes, I love it. I love it. But you know that the problem was the problem. Right. Yeah. That's why they're stuck. <laughs> yes. And that's why I go there to, to tell them, start all over again. Yeah, because but, they are very comfortable to access to the same Filipino cultures and languages and everything. So that's why they just stopped. Stuck. stuck. <laughs> why? Because ex extraction, evangelism, yeah. just the same. But now many of them have learned that they have now, those who are missionary minded, should, if they have an Egyptian friend or a non-Filipino friend, is never bring this friend to your church. Mm. You see. Ah. Start a new <laughs> disciple making movement with your disciples. Yeah, because there's not just only the problem of the Filipino diaspora, but also Korean diaspora I too. See. Not only for Korean diaspora, but also all other kinds of diaspora That's right. group. Yeah. That's right. They get stuck. Yeah, but so I was, I wanted to ask, what is your opinion? <laughs> and, uh, but it is not easy. It is not it's, easy. Yeah, it's, uh, so much is wasted. In the sense that because we have the wrong paradigm of how to plant God's kingdom on earth. Okay? And the idea is that we are going to build local churches in the long run. So I call this the, the traditional paradigm as church planting and church growth. Mm -hmm. But here, mm -hmm. our approach is mm -hmm. community organizing yes. and community transformation. So your view is the parish understanding that... I am going to look at it geographically. The territory is all God's. Okay. Okay. I'm going to bring everybody to realize that who is their God and who will bless them and turn them into a city of joy or a prosperous city like Seoul or like Manila. Although Manila is not very good. I always use Singapore as the example. Can every city in the Philippines become a new Singapore or a new Seoul so that they, uh, the, there is no one who is poor among them and that there is no corrupt official among them. Mm -hmm. we, this is a, the bottom line question of any community, whether it's transformed or not, is only two. Are the people, at least not hungry, mm -hmm. but most important, prosperous I, I, they advise it. and second uh, this can happen only if the leaders are not corrupt so only two very simple where justice prevails so that everybody enjoys shalom peace and it can be done so simply the Jesus way and not our Presbyterian or Methodist way <laughs> uh, don't plant a church or a denomination. Plant a community, community organized transforming, yeah. transforming. Okay. community. Can you give us a kind of a case study or example? Yeah, based on the, your transformation 
transforming disciple group? Well, humbly China. speaking, right. and I know I'm speaking publicly now, but normally I say this privately. I say secretly, the house church movement <laughs> is larger than all the denominations in Asia combined. In other words, the house church movement in Asia, in China, Japan, uh, uh, and uh, India, etc., Vietnam, is larger. Our, our numbers are, are about 6%. So the, the denominations in Asia, including the Catholic, okay, Roman Catholic Church, uh, which is about 1%. Then you've got the Presbyterian, the, uh, all other denominations, Anglican, etc., would be maybe up to about 3%. Mm -hmm. So we're almost double the size of all the denominations. And we're doubling every year. So but, we, but regarding your statistics, can you give us any official... How, how do you know that? Because I know that, because Ralph Winter also said that yeah. there are so many people who cannot be classified according to a traditional way of the Christianity. I know that, but... Uh, well, at least Lausanne recognizes it. And I've talked to David Barrett. I've talked to uh, Johnston. And, and all those who are in the research. And so there is a section now on, uh, I know. Uh, in Christianity. Even, even SIA yeah. and Vice President Howard, he also mentioned about that. But I'm very curious then, based on what uh, yeah. statistics? Just, uh, I just come from Cambodia. Oh. And I connect with the house churches there. Right. And they have, honestly, something to do with the local church. But we encourage them not to have connection with the traditional church because whoever becomes members of the traditional church will become traditional because if the mouse or the rabbit is close to an elephant what will happen to the rabbit it will be trampled down and they will become traditional they will become elephant now and so uh, we are growing without the help or without partnership with the elephants because it is a zero budget mission. All right, so you mentioned about that you again. disciple every believer that your house is a church. And your target is to convert the Buddhist temple where the monk is a Christ follower. Okay? So if we even avoid the use the word the word Christian because Christian is bad. In many ancient contexts, Christians are foreigners, Christians are traitors. Uh, uh, to the local people. And so we use the word uh, followers of Isa yes, al Masih yes, yes. or followers of uh, uh, Maitreya uh, Buddha. In, in other words, uh, that, you, know, you use now the, uh, the Buddhist understanding of the coming Messiah, Maitreya, uh, to introduce Jesus, not the, almost like the Jewish Messiah. So you find a term within that culture that represents Jesus, and rather than use all our terminology of four spiritual laws or, or EE, uh, those terminology are, are strange to the Buddhist ears, unless they are university students. Uh, that's a, a different story. But university students are only top 5% of, of the culture. And, and so, but student ministry is also very important uh, because you're hitting the future top leaders. But how do you win the top leaders immediately? Well. Those who are uh, village chief, we train every house church that whatever good works you do in the community, talk to the village chief first. You see? And every uh, foreigner who would come to help in the community because of our connection in the house church movement, you ask permission first from the village chief what he should do in the community. So you already follow Romans 13 just by the way you practice house church. You respect the authority of the uh, political structure uh, in, the, in the community. Thank you. Dr. Lim, uh, personally speaking, I don't have any inconvenient feeling about an you know, insider movement or, you know, uh, what was another thing? Uh, radical, anyway, the radical, you know, things. But uh, hearing that, is it sometimes too too much uh, artificial? Like, uh, uh, it is likely that we are doing with, uh, I mean, strong intention behind. So how do you how do you think? 
Well, uh, yeah. Uh, for those who don't understand it fully, I would say, uh, please uh, try to read more about what, how deep it is. Uh, how profound it is because uh, it is following the perfect example of the perfect man, Jesus. Okay? But uh, if I will give him just one minute to, to react, I will say, just give us five more years. By 2022, you can criticize us all we can. But let the insider movements boom. Okay? Let them be. And uh, if any local Christian, uh, church Christians, get to know any house church Christians, uh, let's not debate or argue with one another, but just uh, be patient to accept one another. And I'm glad it's found in Lausanne's Cape Town commitment. Part two, letter C, section number four, talks about loving means you respect its other's uh, missionary approach. Okay, and it mentions that there are now many followers of Jesus who follow other religions, who are still in other religions. And, and so we must be like Barnabas, who in Acts chapter 11, when he saw something new happening in Antioch, he did not uh, criticize them. In fact, he appreciated the grace of God among them. So, uh, so let's be gracious to one another, at least for the next five years, uh, until the next Lausanne. <laughs> Four. But then, at that time, I'm afraid those who will attend may not be only just wearing Western suits or Filipino Barong Tagalog, but they will be wearing Muslim gowns and Buddhist monk gowns and, uh, <laughs> or Hindu priest gowns. So, in other words, uh, there will be Brahmins, uh, yogis who follow Jesus. <laughs> so that's the kind of, uh, in five years, I think, uh, we'll, we'll cover most of Asia already. Just one comment uh, which you mentioned a uh, while ago. Uh, the many Filipino uh, witness or OFW going abroad. Uh, in Korea itself, uh, there are uh, 65,000 Filipinos, and there are many Filipino churches there. Uh, I just came from Korea. Uh, uh, I spoke during uh, Filipinos Chuseok joint gathering. Uh, I challenged them. Uh, not only having Filipino churches here in Korea, why don't you minister to Korean? Why don't you minister to any other foreign nationalities here in Korea? Since you are good in English and you call yourself as a missionary, why are you only focusing on Filipino churches there? Uh, uh, one of them which I like most in Kairos, uh, if you are pastoring for Filipino, as a pastor, you are not missionary. You are transplanted pastors. Personally, I want to call the Korean missionary who is doing Korean churches here in the Philippines, I don't want to call them as a missionary. Uh, maybe they, they, will be, they, will be, they will be they upset, they will be upset, yeah. but in my heart, I don't want to call them as a missionary. So uh, for Filipino OFW, future OFW, we have to tell them, no. Kairos includes that. Yeah, it's yeah, very we, basic training yeah, I taught, in uh, I teach Philippine them. missions. Uh, no, yeah. no Filipino church abroad. Minister to local people there. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's Kairos. Yeah. Yeah. Well, however, if you judge the, you judge the Korean church pastors here now, they, they, <laughs> yeah, because based on Kairos, if they do, to do I, 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 I'm not a Korean pastor. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If, but they are, on the one hand, they are ministering, they are taking care of Christians. 
But what is they are doing, also serving Filipinos here, and also they are supporting Filipino Christians also, I train them again and let them go abroad, let them be a missionary. I would say that even though they are doing uh, pastoring here, but also they are... Well, yeah, yeah there is a positive yes, yes. side. There's a big positive, positive side. Uh, I knew I know one church in uh, Toronto, uh, Toronto Yongnak Church. Even though it is Korean church in Canada, but uh, the church bears uh, four to five uh, the other ethnic groups in not under the Korean church governance, but they uh, incubating some other uh, tribe uh, ethnic groups. And I was reported in Global Summit, it is North Carolina, Pastor Ralph Garay, it is Southern Baptist. Anyway, he is pioneering many Filipino church in North Carolina, but their church, the characteristic of the churches, uh, bears the uh, other ethnic group also. So, even though that is Filipino church, but not limited in Filipino church, Filipino already. So it can be called uh, as a mission. And uh, uh, even though it is non-direct uh, to other uh, ethnic group, so, uh, but uh, as like a billiard, billiard ball, three cushions. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, pocket ball. <laughs> yeah, it can uh, influence to other denom uh, other ethnic group also. By the way, we need to uh, maintain our goal. Uh, um, we will remain in our ethnic group or our kingdom. Uh, that will they cannot be called as a missionary, but when we open or when we uh, focus on the God's kingdom or the all tribe, all nations, still there are a lot of strategies or a direct way or a non-direct way, something, a lot of strategy we can uh, draw, I think. Yeah, I'm not denying, I'm not denying their important role yes. as a yes. diaspora yes. church, yes. but generally speaking, yes. in order to encourage Filipino really doing missional work abroad. Uh, uh, yes. So I'm just stressed yes, on this. I was uh, director of Korean Diaspora Forum before. So our important uh, agenda uh, is uh, go beyond the border, but beyond the race. Uh, that is uh, beyond Korean and, um, territory, that is very important Korean diaspora agenda also. It means we used to be uh, staying in Korean community all the time. So uh, I fully agree with you, uh, but more than that, there, uh, there is some uh, attention or struggling uh, to go beyond uh, in diaspora society. Yes. Mm -hmm. Possibly. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, yeah, thank you for being so positive in responding to my word radical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah.